You're listening to the Aesthetically Speaking Podcast, presented by Next Tech. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aesthetically Speaking Podcast. I'm here with the amazing Robin. Hey, Tyler. So excited to be here today. Me too. It's been a great day. Oh God, it's been fabulous. By the way, let's stop. Tell the audience where we are. We are in beautiful San Diego, one of my favorite cities. I mean, how do you not love San Diego? Right. Amazing weather, 365 days a year, but we're in San Diego and we're at the ASPS meeting. Absolutely. And you know, they opened today and this booth, when they first opened, this this place was crazy. I mean, there was a lot of people on the floor. Like, okay, we know COVID is over and people are back in business, but I haven't been to a meeting in a while where I've seen this many people. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. Pretty there, pumped. There really was a buzz. I haven't seen this buzz at ASPS for probably five or six years. Yeah, no, totally. Totally agree with you. We've got a special guest with us today. So yeah, we do. let's bring her on to tell us what she thinks. So Anna Browning, she is here as our, she's our VP of Aesthetic Sales. So super excited. Anna, I mean, what do you think about the show? Well, thank you for having me today on this, Robin and Tyler. Of course. So excited. Today has been very, very fun and very informative. And wait, Anna, so you've been with Next Tech for how long? I have been with Next Tech for 12 and a half years. 12 and a half years. And you've been to this meeting countless times, right? Yeah. I don't know if I have counted how many times <laughs> I've been here. <laughs> so what do you think? Like, what's your gauge on this? Do you feel like there's a good buzz? Is there good energy? Good buzz, good energy. What I have been liking is our ability to engage with a lot of our existing customers and hear about what's going on in their practice and sharing with them all of the new and exciting things that we're doing. Yeah, that's right. You know, I did I did notice a lot of people were coming in the booth asking, what's new? What are you doing these days? And it was nice to be able to talk about some of those new things like embedded payments and surcharging and ACH. A lot of cool things that we're doing right now. So it is exciting. It is. And our booth looks great. We yeah, have totally. a big giraffe, right? San Diego Zoo, <laughs> giraffe. right? What is it? Six feet, six feet <laughs> giraffe, yeah. It's huge. It's mm-hmm. huge. People are getting pictures with it. They're stopping by. I think that we're giving away two tickets to oh. the San Diego Zoo. There's right. an auction of sorts. Okay. A raffle. I mean, we're bringing out the animal and everybody. Let's face it. Here, okay? <laughs> I even saw real. some stuffed animals too that we're <laughs> yeah, giving out. Right. So we're all in on the on the giraffes. I like yeah, it. Yeah, totally. I think we've probably got the coolest thing going on. Yeah, totally. You know what else I've been seeing is people from other societies that are checking it out, looking at what they're doing at this meeting, what kind of energy they're bringing in. So, yeah. I mean, that says a lot for what they're trying to do to kind of re, you know, almost like re-energize what's going on in the meeting space. So different vibe, good vibe. Yeah. It does kind of feel like we're kind of crossing specialties a little bit. A little, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. I will say, I don't think anybody else has three booths here, though. We no. have three booths. We have our podcast booth. Yep. We have our Touch MD booth. Mm-hmm. And we have our Next Tech booth. Right. So compete with that, right? They can't miss us, right? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. No, I think it's good. And we've got a lot of leadership here. You know, our new CEO is in, he's in the house, right? Yeah. Our new CMO. Right. First time I've met both of them. They've been awesome. Yeah, they're loving it. They're checking things out, learning about this space. Exciting. We have, Dr. You know, Patrick Basil. Yep. Dr. Basil's here. One of our KOLs. He's in the booth, hanging out with us, giving a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of interaction, I think, with the customers, which is great. So Yeah, yeah. Any Anything exciting that we're seeing out there? Anything that's unexpected or new? I don't know that I would say new. I mean, again, I've only hit half of the exhibit hall so far. <laughs> but, you know, I keep running into a lot of people that have been around for a long time. You see the energy. You see the excitement. And that in and of itself says a lot about what's going on in the meetings. Seeing, the, you know, seeing the consolidators. So we've got Arsa that's next door to us, big consolidator out of New Jersey. And so they're here. So they've got their, their presence is noted and they're starting to, you know, you know, those fellows and residents are getting out of school. They're kind of looking at where they want to go. So some of them go into private practice and some of them are getting out there and you know, looking at the consolidated area and thinking about, well, I want to work for a much bigger company. So, breast implant companies, obviously, they're here. Yeah, Motiva. Motiva, I see That's they're right. here. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I remember seeing them before they were actually in the U.S. market. So, it's interesting to see them here having a presence. Yep. 
totally. And we've got, you know, the usual suspects. Yeah. You know, they're here, you know, like your injectables, definitely instruments. Those are always the most popular booth. I mean, everybody being next to, like we're next to Black and Black, seeing them, you know, they tend to be three people deep sometimes. So that's that's always a fun place to be. It is true. They're busy. It's kind of like in and out over there. So I, Yeah, I know. I mean, well, those doctors, <laughs> they love their instruments. So It's true. I would say, you know, from a couple of the interviews I did today, it definitely seems like this is where, this is the meeting that they come to network. Yes. They know that their friends are here. Yeah. They're people that they went to school with mm-hmm. are here. This is the networking meeting based on their feedback. Well, and it's a little earlier than it usually is. So, I mean, we're still in September. Usually the meetings don't kick off until October. So we're a little early. I'm sure there's economics around that considering it's a major election year. Do we dare say that and bring that subject up? Because that's a hot topic in and of itself. It's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, Anna, think about it. Like, what are your sales reps seeing? I mean, I know that there's hesitation in the market. What are you seeing? Yeah. Thank you for asking that. We are, we're seeing a little bit of a, a lull right now, a little bit of a slowdown. And it's actually reassuring to hear that, you know, as talking to physicians while we're here, that you know, just spending and the practices is down from the patient perspective. And therefore that's, you know, the, the providers are not spending. And we're hopeful again, having been at Next Tech for, for 12 plus years, I've seen this play three, you know, three times and post-election, we're all looking forward to it rebounding and, and coming back full force. Yeah. Event I did last week with Karen Zupko and we had, I think 12, no, no, 15 present, 15 practices present And again, very much the same story. There's a slowdown. There's a lull. People that are booked surgery are pushing off. Uncertainty. But as you said, we have seen this. We've seen this many times already. Am I stating how old I am because I just said that? No, you're you're still safe. I was say, I hope I didn't just, <laughs> just give that away. However, I mean, thinking about it from a presidential election perspective, this is not something that we, you know, we talk about this all year. We warn, we say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to slow down. And then when it happens, everybody's like, you didn't tell me that was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, why is why? this happening? Yeah, yeah right. I'm like, <laughs> no, we've talked about this. But yeah, no, it was, they had all said the same thing. And again, it's like, it's going to come back. It's going to happen. And it does. It's usually like, it doesn't matter who, it's just that it's over. It's a great point. So two things I've heard today, two services that it seems like many plastic surgeons are adding, semaglutide and IV therapy or IV hydration. I've heard IV hydration multiple times today in terms of pairing that, like they're pairing it with not just injectables and fillers, but more of like this experience. Like we have the waiting room experience of patients sitting and we have a coffee station, but also having an IV hydration station as hey, when you come into our practice, this is part of the experience, Mm. whether it's part of your membership or it's just, hey, if you choose any of our surgical procedures, we're going to pair this drip with it, this cocktail with it. So interesting. I've heard that three times today. Well, I mean, Anna and I were just having lunch with a practice administrator, CEO, and he was talking about, was it regenerative medicine? Yeah. No, I think that it's relevant, definitely. They're starting to think about, he was uh, talking about it from the perspective of, how they're expanding, but also not just that they're offering, but there's just generally a demand. People are starting to really request it. And so either you react and add it on or you find yourself left out in the cold, I guess, is what he was thinking. So they're exploring it. But I thought that that was interesting to think of it from that perspective. So Definitely. Anna, what are you seeing with your team on the non-surgical side with the plastic surgeons that they're working with? How are they adopting the med spa side of their business or the non-surgical side of their business? Do you feel like most of them have med spas? I don't even know if I could put a percentage on it. We've got plastic surgery practices that have, you know, separate med spas. I would maybe say it's 20% of our business. If that, they're either attached to one or they're interested in opening a separate one. Something I heard that was interesting today was these private equity companies when they're looking at acquiring a practice, and in this case, let's say a plastic surgeon, many of them will start off and they'll open five med spas in a geographical territory. But let's just, let's just say it's a metro area like Las Vegas. They'll place five med spas there and then they'll go and acquire a plastic surgeon and then they'll feed the med spa patients to that surgeon. This is the first time I heard that and I thought, brilliant, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And I've never heard, I've always kind of segmented, you know, surgeons being acquired, med spas being acquired, derms being acquired, but this kind of cross-pollination, the first time I heard it curated that way, which which I thought was interesting. 
Yeah, I think that the plastic surgeons want to do those higher dollar procedures and focus on that versus the other, the you know, non-surgical procedures. That's what they went to school for. That's what their joy is. And they want to focus on that. So I think that is genius. Well, it makes sense. I mean, they, so often I'll talk to a surgeon, like, I do not want to do injectables. It's not what I enjoy doing. But they recognize that that is, again, something that feeds into the surgical business, but it also helps with retention. Yeah. So not not a new story there, but again, something that they just don't always think about in their career until they get to the point where they're like, I'm losing business. And then they start to grasp that concept of, okay, I should have been doing this or now let's start doing it. How do I do it? And do I have the right software or the right tools or even the right team in place to do that? Yeah. But we are seeing different approaches to how they do that. And kind of like what you were just saying, thinking about that, that the feeder system, that cross referral all within that network, it, it just makes sense. Yeah. You know, and also we're going to, we've talked to people before as guests and we think about not just from what they are in their career right now, but we think about that long-term component of eventually they may not want to do surgery anymore. And so this just continues to feed their business and then they can kind of slow down the surgical side of it or bring in a junior partner to do that. And, you know, we all get older and as we get older, we find ourselves not wanting to do some of those, you know, heavier, more intense things. I asked a question today on how a surgeon is differentiating himself, and it was very old school, and I loved it, but it's actually different than what everybody else is doing, because everybody else is trying to optimize, which is great. You want to optimize the experience from A to Z, from the time the patient calls in to the time they're treated and when they leave, but for him, he's owning that entire patient experience where he's doing the consult, he's doing the surgery, he's doing the post-op. And he wants to own as much of that as he can. And the number one thing he said, like his main thing was being kind. Like I'm going to be kind to my patients and I want them to know that I'm there for them anytime they need me. And it's not even anything crazy. Like it's not a crazy concept, but just the fact that he cares and he wants to be a part of all of it, that's how he's differentiating. So it's like everyone else is going left, which is great. And he's like, I'm going to go right and I'm going to own the whole thing. Well, I applaud the fact that he actually recognizes that as a differentiator and that he's leaning into it. Because a lot of people just don't even try or don't even know what their differentiator is. Think about the customer journey with that. Oh. Same face, same voice. Here's right. me from start to finish. Mm -hmm. That makes for a yeah. really good and I would say better customer experience if they've got the time time to do that. Well, think about it from an old school perspective. You know, there's people that appreciate that a physician actually spends time in the room with them. I mean, especially if you think about those patients that have never been in an aesthetic practice and they go in there for the first time and their idea of what that patient journey looks like may be only what they've experienced at, you know, their their general practitioner, their PCP. So a different experience, a different way to think about it. And if he's going to talk about, you know, being kind, applaud that all over. Yeah. He kept saying that with my patients, but also with my staff. And I asked him how his staff would describe him. And he's like, being kind, but also I'm a perfectionist. But on the inverse, there's those physicians that feel like they can still deliver that high quality and that great patient experience totally. without having that one-to-one -one throughout the entire journey. And I think that that goes back to what are the tools you're using? And I, as you were saying that, I'm thinking, touch MD, touch MD, touch MD. <laughs> and I keep thinking that because we so often forget about what are those things that bridge the gap, that smooth the way, that really give people the autonomy that they want. And there's a lot of people that are like, I don't want to sit in the waiting room. I don't want to be in the office for a lot of time. But if I can go home and consume it at my own pace, yeah. I think... That, to me, makes sense yeah. because then I can sit back in the own comfort of my home, really understand the procedure, get more understanding and perspective about it, and then send in my questions. Then I want my surgeon to answer them. I yes. don't have to have an hour with them. Yeah. But to me, that's more convenient, and I can understand it at my pace. But again, I think it goes back to do you – practices have different ways that they solve for this, but it doesn't mean that they're not differentiating. It's yeah. just what is the most critical way that they're doing and it's and does that meet that patient's needs? Yeah, and that's there's not a right or wrong way right. per se because there's things that, you know, this doctor's doing that I love, but that another doctor is owning and that's his or her differentiator right. that he doesn't do. I love that. Yeah. One thing too is when you talk about, you know, for him, he wanted to own the consultation and he wants to own the follow-up, but you brought up Touch MD. 
if practices can realize that, hey, I can duplicate and replicate my consult experience and I could teach four or five of my staff members to give a very parallel experience with the consultation as what I'm doing, well, then I could trust that that's going to mm-hmm. happen if I'm on vacation or if I just don't have the time or the bandwidth. Great. Yeah. They're getting this high level consultation and patients are watching videos or whatever it is. I'm using the drawing tools and the slider But being able to replicate and duplicate, that could be a way to streamline and to ensure that everyone's getting a high quality consultation. Anna and I were just having a conversation. We have a women in technology group at Next Tech, and we were just meeting, what was it, a week ago? What we were talking about? Personal branding. Personal branding, yeah. Yep. Similar, very similar concept. Like differentiating yourself. How do you brand yourself or, you know, present yourself, I would say, right? Well, I just want to say... Well, number one, I think it's cool that we have the women in technology. You both know that I'm a girl dad, and I genuinely admire both of you as female leaders who I look up to personally. Seriously. And I think it's cool because you've trailblazed for, you know, not only the women at our company, but just women in general, even for my two little girls to see that and to know that their dad has leaders in his life that he respects that are knocking it out of the park. So shout out to you guys. Robin's engagement with women in tech just recently has been really a really cool thing to experience. She did a session on <laughs> when traveling, <laughs> the what to do versus what not to do. Things like that you don't even think of like, hey, take the can- the bag in the trash can and put it on the remote because those are dirty and not sanitary. And <laughs> as we've been traveling, I'm like, wait, we forgot this one thing. We have to, you know, go back and tell everybody. Prep the room yeah. in a certain way. Right. Like, don't do that. Right. Hilarious. <laughs> but she travels all the time. So no, but no better person to, you know, educate the other women That's on awful. safety when we travel and all the things that come with that. And the other session being, you know, personal branding and you know, women, I would say in particular, have a hard time talking about themselves and it's an uncomfortable thing. And Robin just talked about it being completely normal and okay. And, you know, there were some very vulnerable moments of some women on our our team bringing things up of why that's hard. And shout out to Robin for, you know, sharing her tips and tricks with how to brand yourself. You know, it's funny though. I love that we as a company think about how we bring people together and build up the teams, whether it's doing leadership training, which is a great part of what Next Tech does. We do a lot of leadership training courses and we invest back in our women as well as, you know, everybody in the group and actually everybody in in the organization. We think about how we invest internally so that we have the right approach in teams externally. So it's a great, it's a great way to think about where our company differentiates. Yeah. Because we like to think about ourselves as a scalable company. So I agree. There is something, there is something I thought of, Anna, something that I love that you do is you're really good at networking outside of work and not networking to gain business or to close deals. Like obviously you do that as well. But networking with your friends, like with people that you went to school with, with your MBA group, I think that is so cool. I mean, you have your two beautiful girls at home, your husband, right? You're knocking it out of the park. As a wife, as a mom, you manage a huge team, right? The aesthetic sales team at Next Tech, your VP of, of aesthetic sales. But then you'd make time to go and do that. So what would you say? Like, how do you do that? <laughs> a good question, Tyler. Number one, thank you. And I love that you always lift, lift us up. It's, it's buckets. I think about things as buckets. You know, I've got my family bucket. I've got my work bucket. I've got my personal buckets. And I do my best to just feed the buckets and keep them as full as possible. I know I've shared with you, I try to go to dinner with my EMBA team probably once every month, every other month or so. Part of my decision making with going back to school as a working mom, and I had twin two-year-olds at that time. It was completely insane. I look back going, I have no idea how I did it. But part of my decision making was one, being a good role model and setting that example for my daughters, but two, networking. You know, I can network with my family and friends and coworkers, but I wanted a bigger, I wanted to cast a wider net. And I had the opportunity to meet a lot of really, really unique people within my class. And they assign us groups in my cohort. And just the four of us have 
become best friends and we lift each other up and we talk about what's going on and, and, you know, their worlds and their, it, it all is, it all relates, but it's a special relationship, but it keeps, selfishly, it keeps my bucket full. It's evident. I mean, 12 and a half years and do you know how many people came up to the booth that knew her or I remember when. <laughs> we don't always want to remember those remember no. when moments, but you know, sometimes, you know, but it's kind of, I mean, we had lunch with a practice CEO that actually was one of the accounts you managed so many years ago and 12 years ago. Right. Wow. I said, you look familiar. He said, you look familiar. And I was like, I can't connect the dots, but <laughs> yep, we figured it out. That's, no, that's That's the great thing about it. So it's like, you're right. Relationship building. And she's very yeah. good at it. And the words of Anna. It's true. One of the best, I'll say this about Anna, nobody cares more about her people than Anna. And before I, I joined her team, I had probably four or five people tell me that. And I'm like, okay, that's amazing. And it was that times 10. So shout out to you, your leadership. I love the buckets analogy and how you're trying to fill those buckets. And Gotta love the work-life balance. <laughs> It's true. It's a work in progress always. <laughs> right. okay. Well, I love this today. I think Me it's too. been a great, great first day. I'm excited about what we're going to do tomorrow. And Anna's and looking Anna at me like, is... who we? She's like, you're not pulling me back over here. She's like, yes. who are you going to pull you guys, are real, you guys are really good at this. This is not my jam. You've done great. It's been yeah, great. It's been I was going to say, we'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Gotcha. She's like, I'm that's your here. chair. I think here. it has your name behind the chair. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. And we hope to see you tomorrow on Aesthetically Speaking. Until then, have a great rest of the show and we'll see you tomorrow. Woo woo. Champagne up. Thanks for listening to Aesthetically Speaking, the podcast where beauty meets business, presented by Next Tech. Follow and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Links to the resources mentioned on this podcast are available in your show notes. For more information about Next Tech, visit nexttech.com or to learn more about TouchMD, go to touchmd.com. Aesthetically Speaking is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.